Hello everyone and welcome to this week's disability information video. This week we're going to be discussing the topic of speech and language disorders. So I'm just going to get, jump straight into our topic. So speech and language disorders refer to a set of disorders that affect our ability to communicate using speech. So it affects basically the ability to do what I'm doing right now, which is using words to convey meaning to other people. Um, so speech and language disorders affect the ability to do this. So there's basically three main categories of speech and language disorders. The first is voice disorders and then speech disorders and then language disorders. And I'm going to discuss each of these in turn. So first off, voice disorders. Voice refers to the sound that is produced when air is pushed past our voice box um, or in other words, our larynx. Um, creating vibrations through our vocal cords. Uh, this this doesn't necessarily need to produ be produced as words. It can just it's just the sound that's produced when you push air past your voice box. So, for example, I can go like ah, uh, and that's just my voice, right? But I'm not making any words. So that's that's what your voice is basically it's the the sound that's created when air is pushed past your voice box and expressed uh, externally so when we're talking about voice disorders these are disorders that affect the individual's ability to produce their voice so these disorders may affect the pitch so whether the the sound is high like ah uh, or low uh, um, it may affect the loudness, so some voice disorders uh, lead to an individual only be able to speak very quietly, so they can't actually speak that loud because their vocal cords are unable to produce the vibrations needed for, for loud sounds. Um, and then it can also affect the quality of a voice, so how it actually, like whether it's it's gravelly or, or if it's squeaky, you know, it, that there's a lot of different ways your voice can sound and these can all be affected by voice disorders. So dis voice disorders involve some form of damage or impairment to the voice box. Uh, this can occur from things like tumors growing inside the voice box or involuntary muscle movements um, that basically push muscles in your voice box to move involuntarily. So uh, this may result in people just randomly making vocal noises. So like, uh, uh, mm, like they, they're involuntary. It's the involuntary production of voice. Um, so that kind of covers what voice disorders are. Uh, now moving on to speech disorders. So as I mentioned already, not all voice is produced as speech. For example, Babies babble a lot of random noises, but these noises have no meaning to anyone else. Um, so that's an example of the baby producing voice. It's producing the noises, but it's not producing speech because it's not actually communicating any words to other people. Um, so speech occurs when noises, um, our voice basically, is altered by a variety of complex movements in our mouth to produce decodable sounds that have meaning to other people. In other words, uh, speech occurs when we're producing words. Um, what's important to know is that producing sound is a it's producing sound or speech really is it's a mechanical process that involves precise muscle actions in the head, neck, chest, and abdomen. So, when we're producing the speech that we so naturally use most of the, most of the time so for most people speech is a very uh, natural thing but so we don't but we don't really think about how it's a very mechanical process so for example when i produce an s sound like s, my mouth is making a specific formation so i'm putting my two my front teeth together and i'm pushing my tongue up against my bottom set of teeth to produce the s sound so different sounds are produced by different movements in your mouth um, and that's really that's sort of the core thing that needs to be understood to understand speech disorders so um, with this in mind speech disorders kind of have two primary causes uh, the first uh, cause could be um, 
a disorders that affect our body's ability to, to produce the sounds needed to form words. So it, it basically affects things like uh, our mouth's ability to form the shapes needed to produce the sounds that that most people can produce. Um, another cause can be uh, neurological conditions. So I'll discuss each of these in turn. So first of all, um, disorders that affect an, an individual's uh, ability to produce sounds with their body um, can be caused by things like brain damage uh, which if which can cause muscle weakness in in the mouth lips face or chest um, and that can affect an individual's ability to produce sounds so this this brain damage basically leads to uh, a muscle weakness um, another another potential cause could be something like a tongue tie uh, where someone's tongue is actually at birth, it's tethered to the bottom of their mouth, so they can't move it properly. Um, and that is actually a common cause of lisping. So because someone's tongue is tied to the bottom of their mouth, they can't produce the the sounds that most people can produce. So you can even practice this yourself. Just keep your tongue placed on the bottom of your mouth and try to speak normally. Um, so for example, I'm doing that right now, and you can see how it affects my ability to produce speech. So that, that sort of gives a bit of insight into how um, speech disorders can be caused by our body's inability to produce the, the mechanical motions needed to produce speech. Um, but there can also be more neurological causes to, to speech disorders. So, for example, a dysfunction in our brain can affect our ability to produce speech. And one well-known uh, speech disorder that sort of falls under this category would be stuttering. So Stuttering um, is a pretty, it, it's basically, it's not caused by any physical abnormalities in the mouth. You know, someone's ability to produce speech is completely intact, but it, it, it's caused basically mm -hmm. by some sort of neurological uh, condition. And sci scientists actually aren't really sure exactly what causes stuttering, but um, it's clear that it, it's something that's going on inside of, of the brain and 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 it's not necessarily caused by an individual's ability to produce the mechanical motions needed to produce sound. So stuttering isn't fully understood by scientists yet. I just want to emphasize that. But from what I understand, uh, scientists are pretty confident that it's a neurological disorder and not uh, something that's caused by a physical abnormality. Um, now that we've covered all of those, uh, I think we can move on into the next portion of our video, uh, which will be a interview with someone with lived experience uh, with spe a speech and language disorder. Hello and welcome to the RCD ShareNet. My name is Dave Thompson and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator and this is our three-month series that we were doing on disability information and we are trying to give people a bit of a lived experience about certain disorders and disabilities that people have. And today we are talking about speech and language impairments. And uh, our, um, our hardworking student, Oliver, has given some information at the start of this video about what those sort of the basic ABCs of what it is. And at the ends of these videos, like we have for the whole series, we're interviewing someone who lives within those and, and has that experience. And I tell you, uh, uh, I know this lady from two different ways because I used to work in comedy. I ran a comedy club and I used to run the amateur night. And I had many people saying that that was the most scariest thing they've ever done is to stand up on a stage on amateur night and to do it while stuttering. I, I don't know. I just. I couldn't, I couldn't even, uh, when I saw your name and I saw you years ago when I first met you, I went, wow, that takes a lot of guts. So um, Nina, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, you have been on, contributed to stuff we've done before, but welcome again and hello. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And um, you have uh, also a, you're very, very busy right now. So we're lucky that we got you. We thought we would just have to use one of your videos. <laughs> uh, but you have a new book out. You're an author and um, you've done, you do stand-up comedian, you do speaking engagements. 
Yeah, I have a new book coming out very Give soon. Give us a little bit of background of what you're up to. Sure. Um, so um, I do, I, I have this book here. Let me grab it, show you guys. It is called Stutterer Interrupted. It's my memoir about being a person who stutters, who eventually found comedy. My whole life, I've been a really, really big fan of comedy, um, which also leads me to the next book that I have coming out. That's actually my third book. That is Bay Area Stand-Up Comedy, A Humorous History. And then also I have my oh. first book, which is Once Upon an Accommodation, a book about le learning d d d disabilities. And this one we, is for kids. We have so, that one. Oh, you have awesome. sent us that one. Yeah. Great. Good. That's right. It's, it's been a while. Um, so the, the, those are my books, but I'm also a stand-up comic and, and a professional speaker. I speak at nonprofits, at colleges, at corporations. Um, and um, a lot of my comedy, not all of it, but some of it, is on being a person who stutters. And also I have dyslexia. So writing these books, not, not super easy. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I still you're, had a lot you're of like that You're like the salmon that goes up the stream, I tell you. <laughs> little, sometimes more than others, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to avoid that's, that bear. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, yeah, if you're going to do it, uh, if you're going to do it the hard way, that's the hard way to do it. So um, yeah, I definitely. But it's a thing that I love and, yep. and, and I've been wanting to do it since I was 11 years old. And then the dream died when I was like 17, but you know, I was writing jokes and I was looking up open mics, all this stuff. But I was like, I've never seen anybody who stutters do comedy. To be a comedian, a prerequisite is to be fluent. So, so it's like, okay, it's not gonna happen. Let's mm -hmm. move on. But then I started doing comedy when I was 35 and I've been doing it now for almost 12 years. What are the two aspects of your life that stuttering affects that other people might not think about? You know, and for me, because of my dyslexia and learning disabilities, um, I, I always include that in there too, because as much as I stutter and today I'm having a pretty fluent day, tomorrow I may not. Last week I didn't. Um, sometimes I'll be fluent all day. I'll go up on stage and not be, um, and, and I'll stutter a lot. Some days I'll stutter a lot during the day, get on stage and I'm fluent. It makes no sense. It's totally, totally weird. Stutter. I think a lot of times people think that the stutter is the biggest part because they have to d deal with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, with it. Whereas for me, the dyslexia is the thing that makes me sometimes misread a text sometimes it is the thing that makes me write out a bill wrong and i pay a thousand dollars instead of a hundred oh gosh yeah dollars that happened to my pg and e once so things like that are what um are some of those experiences and so i think my dyslexia um or organization is not the best i'll show you this is my desk <laughs> which includes uh, a microwave. Um, <laughs> so my executive function isn't always great either. Right. And and that's a, something that, that people wouldn't see. Like I've, with my illness, I have muscle spasms and whatnot. And I explain it to people that imagine your worst enemy is the puppet master on the strings of your arms. <laughs> and you yes. just don't know what's going to happen every day. <laughs> All of a sudden you slap yourself in the face or, right? Spin yeah. the wheel, see what he's going to do to you today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the second question is, what do you think are the two most important things that you do for you in managing your uh, dyslexia and the stuttering? Um, I think, you know, it cannot be underscored enough that the problem with having a disability is not the disability itself oftentimes it is dealing with other people and with my stutter um like if we were like when i go to the net net, net 
national stuttering awareness conference or if i go to an international stuttering awareness conference or if i go to like i've been to the irish stammering association events um like i'm like i'm normal there like the way that i talk nobody flinches nobody tries to fill in my words it's normal um and so like that means that unless i talk like i have very very toned toned jaws because mm. of my stutter yeah, other than that, yeah other than that it's not a problem but the problem is when i involve other people um and mostly fluent people and right. so for me the way that i've managed that is um i mean i think humor has helped me a lot there because of that um and now when i have weird situations which i often have i i, I will bring it onto the stage and mm -hmm. for example when i was introduced to a new comic this was when i was very very new um he asked me my name and i said N -n 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 nina just like that just like pretty much i do all the time and he responded with is that nina with five n's <laughs> and i responded no, that's Nina with two ends and I did this. Um, so those are the kinds of situations that I will respond to in, in that way, especially in comedy, everyday life. I can't necessarily flip people off, um, but having an outlet to do that kind of stuff and to talk about that has really, really helped me. So um, we, w with these questions, we want to keep things a little bit lighter too. and. Um, so we we this third question is what sort of things really make your day what kind of things make my day gosh um you know i think naps naps make my day <laughs> that that i have to say is my single most thing that i want during the day. So sometimes I will wake up just anticipating I can go back for a nap in a few hours. Oh, and, yes, and just to put your brain to rest. And I think also with doing comedy, uh, I want my just like the, like I can st stutter a lot. I can st stutter a little bit. I'll be fine on stage. I can manage it either way. But when my language processing, because dyslexia is a language processing issue, um, when I can't come up with the words or when my language just gets kind of halted, that to me, I, I don't like that. So I like to have my brain rested in order to be on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I was thinking about your, your, one of your last comments about dealing with, with the people and that's a lot of times struggling with mine. I handle it. All right. It's what other people see. And when I was really bad, I used to I was caught, I was like a Mexican jumping bean. And I remember my mom going, well, doesn't that make people uncomfortable? I'm like, I could really care where rats ass what it makes people feel. As long as I don't physically hit them, it's like, come on, right? <laughs> Our last questions is, we want to give some encouragement and empowerment to those people who um, may have a, a similar disorder and a person who stutters or dyslexia. So what do you think you can tell other people to sort of help them? Yeah, I think the thing, the, there's a theory on on stuttering and i think this works for dyslexia i think this works for it, it's my dad who was hard hard of hearing this made sense to him um and so i think it kind of spreads out to a lot of people there's a theory that says that stuttering is like an iceberg and what most people see at the very top is the repetitions is the blocks mm -hmm. just kind of what you hear and see but beneath the waterline is a bigger part of the iceberg and those are the feelings that are associated with having a, a stutter or having a, a disability and those that there was a psychologist back in the day who who said that these feelings included things like isolation and fear and guilt and all these things and to me stuttering um icebergs the iceberg like yeah you can experience all those ne negative things on underneath and there's plenty of days that i still feel that but i also feel that 
the iceberg, if you could look at it in a different way, you might have a different reaction. And so I, I, I hope people can look at whatever di disability they have or whatever disability their kids have or the kids that they work with have or the adults that it doesn't have to be those n n negative things. Because I know for me, when I started to find community around people who stutter, that isolation turned to community and the mm -hmm. hopelessness turn, turned to hope and the guilt turned into f f f forgiveness and the shame turned to pride that we can have pride in our experiences we can have pride in who we are um and we don't have to feel sorry for, for ourselves although like that's a totally normal feeling for some of the bs that we have to d deal with but we can look at this as an empowering experience instead of a, a negative one all right, so uh, thank you very much for all the information and those words of encouragement to everybody. And um, this will be uh, coming out soon as part of our three month series. And um, we're going to be finishing up in March and then we're going to be doing parenting and disability, which is going to be a whole new thing for three months. And um, uh, so uh, please uh, check that out. And thank you very much, Nina. Good luck with the book and all your performing and hopefully we will try to finally get you across that border sometime soon i would love to and, <laughs> and i hope to thanks all right bye bye everybody okay cool thanks guys take care